you know, I never realized just how much I love ambient console menus until I got the Nintendo Switch. Getting a brand new console is always a magical feeling, just booting it up and letting that ambience wash over you as you check out what's new. I'll never forget being 8 years old when I first saw the GameCube screen, or being 9 and diving into the towering monoliths in my sister's PS2. It's a feeling you only get to experience every so many years every time a new console is released. So you bring home the Nintendo Switch, boot it up, and what do you hear? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just a boring, straightforward menu with nothing but silence to accompany it. There's no dreamy background, no eerie vibes, no personality at all, just static images and solid colors. Come on, guys, what happened? Ever since the GameCube, you had these amazing ambient menu screens for every single console. It wasn't until I got this thing that I really started to appreciate them. I guess you never appreciate something till it's gone, am I right? Keep in mind that this video is a product of my own opinions and my personal experiences, rather than objective truths and popular opinion. I haven't played every single console on the planet, so I haven't seen every single console menu that ever existed, but I have played a lot of them and I've spent many hours leaving a lot of those on in the background while I do other things. So why don't we get started? These are my top eight ambient console menu screens in video games. Let's do it. Uh, Nintendo's last console to make use of these beautiful ambient menus. Very similar to the Wii's home screen, you've got everything you need right here on the dashboard. Games, apps, etc. But what makes the menu so nice is the soft monochromatic aesthetic and the relaxing, pulsating music. Uh, it sounds like you're bathing in a fountain or something. Uh, buttons and components of game controllers float without a care in the background. It's easily one of the most tranquil console menus ever created. I love how the different communities circling new games are all represented by literal crowds of people with real posts about them. The plaza is vast and endless, although we only see a small portion of it. Makes you think if you wandered off screen far into the abyss, you discover even more communities, complete with a soft textured floor and a glossy finish. It's smooth, soothing, and puts you in the perfect mood to sit back, relax, pick up that tablet, and start doodling on Miiverse. Or you can just post dumb bullshit. Number seven. Possibly one of the earliest incarnations of an ambient menu. I love that intro sequence. Oh, it is befitting of the name. It sounds dreamy. I don't even know what I'm listening to, but something about it glazes over me in all of the right ways. It is definitely one of the more primitive menus, but it's fairly dynamic for its time. We've got clouds passing by in the background and this wobbly, what what is it, water, an air current? I don't know. It looks like a fountain of some sort. Whatever it is, very easy on the eyes, that's for sure. One thing I really like about this menu is just how consistent it is. Every single options menu or memory card screen, they all use the same background. Round. Makes you feel like it's all in one place rather than leaving and re-entering each menu. And the only bummer is that there's no music, and I mean, you can't really have good ambience without good ambient sound. However, there is a very distinct noise that I can assure all Dreamcast users are more than familiar with, but it doesn't come from the menu, but rather the physical console itself. Oh, that's right, the chunky clicking and grating of the disc reader. I've always found this sound somehow therapeutic in a way. It should be ear rattling, but there's something charming about it, you know? This sound has become so iconic that they even included it in the 3DS's Dreamcast menu theme. <laughs> that is radical. Oh, wow, we're still here. Yeah, the 3DS also has a very excellent ambient menu. It has these nice, smooth tones, a lot of rapid, scurrying echoes, like there's a lot going on. Very fitting of a handheld, I, I do think. The DSi used a very similar menu, but it was the 3DS's visual fidelity that really brought out its full potential. I'd really love to show off this menu, but all I can do is point my camera at it, and it looks like ass, so... You know, if only 3DS capture cards didn't cost $7 billion. But uh, yeah, I always got a very professional vibe from 3DS's menu. Everything's so neat and orderly, floating in place like it belongs there. It's a menu that makes you feel like you're going to get things done. And when you're on the go, that is always good to have. 
And here we have the newest console on this list, the PlayStation 4. I remember not really liking this menu at first. I really preferred the PS3's XMB menu, but it certainly started to grow on me. It definitely has an appeal that the XMB didn't quite have. The PS3's menu was very minimalistic, and I really liked it for that, but the lack of any music in the background is what kept me from leaving the thing on. The PS4, on the other hand, I leave that thing on all the time. Uh, well, firstly, because the thing will actually turn itself off if I'm not using it, but also for that lovely, lovely ambience. The background gently sways in and out of view, just poking its head on screen. It's there, but it's not intrusive. And the music? Oh, this is some distant spring shit. You ever play Pikmin? Yeah. I'm ready to fall asleep to this. Anyway, I have this theory that game companies give their screens this soothing ambient menu screen so the player will be less likely to turn off the system and will be more likely to play some more. Or maybe it's to calm the player down after shooting some dudes in Call of Duty or Wolfenstein or whatever, I don't know. Regardless of the reason, I'm in love with it. You see something like the Xbox One's or the Xbox 360's menu screen and all I can think is just how bland and lifeless it is. All these static rectangles with no flavor or charm, just, you know, total silence. Believe it or not though, once upon a time the guys at Microsoft actually knew how to make a pretty killer dashboard. Now the Xbox original. That is where it's at. You boot the thing up and boom, you're looking at this weird power source, this, this vibrating green blob encircled by machinery. What is this? If console menus could have a cold open, the Xbox original is the one that does it. The dashboard itself is this dark, foreboding green accompanied with a droning idling sound, like we're in a spaceship that's ready to take off or just fine tuning our engines before we go. It's like we're stuck in this big freaky robot, and if you wait long enough, you start hearing things. Man, that is spooky. I left this thing on in the background before, I forget about it every time, but when I hear those voices, I'm, I'm ready to turn this thing off, dude. Oh, what's so cool though is that these voices are actually edited conversations recorded by NASA during their Apollo missions. That makes them literally voices from outer space. That is wild. You know, sometimes it's the creepier menus that really get to you in the most interesting of ways. Here's a nice change of pace, uh, the Wii's home menu. I really have a soft, soft spot for this one because of how much I would leave it on back in middle school. Turning it on, you're greeted by this ringing echo, and it doesn't fade entirely out, but rather continues on into the sporadic melody. It's like you're in a news center, you know how on the news they always have a bunch of TVs behind them. It sounds like all this busy work's going on in the background, you know, like a bunch of bees on cell phones. <laughs> I don't know, man, like... I mean, you know, it's like a big beehive, there's a lot of things going on, all the bees are doing their job, you know, that's kind of how I feel like in the Wii menu, you're in a beehive, but the bees are also on cell phones, so they're, I don't know, they're getting more done, that's, you know, it's like the, the, the ringing of the cell, I don't know what I meant by that, let's, let's just go to the next one. <laughs> You look down at these towering monoliths reaching for the sky. Glowing streaks dance around and then you dive on in. Yes, the PlayStation 2, easily one of my favorites ever. There's little more iconic in the world of video games than the PS2's introduction sequence. I hear all these towers actually represent all the different games you've played. Uh, the more games you've played, the more towers you'll see. That's pretty cool. The menu itself is as simple as can be. Just a black background, those beautiful dancing lights, and two options. That's it. The music here seems to be a combination of waves washing up on a beach and some underwater ambient sounds, like you're chilling at the bottom of the ocean, but simultaneously the shore. I could listen to this for hours. It is one of my favorite ambient tracks ever recorded. The options menu has a very different kind of look. It's got these large rotating crystals that represent a clock and floating glass cubes for each different option. Though my favorite part's gotta be the memory card menu. The background's actually pretty lame. It's just this dull gray, but I love all of the little icons for each save file. You get to see all these little character models you don't see in the game. Like the Indigo Prophecy one, it's this little cartoon 
cartoon version of Lucas Kane running for his life. When I was younger, I would always make sure to look up every single game's save data just to see what they used as the icon, you know? Sometimes it was simple, just a low-poly version of a model taken from the game, but other times it was completely original. It's always a mystery until you go check. Now this is the one. I, I mean, I'm sure you're all going to see this coming, but this one's hands down my favorite. Yes, the GameCube. I can't even begin to tell you how I felt the first time I saw this thing. It was eerie, mysterious, hypnotizing even. You just want to stare into that floating cube, watch it bob left and right, gently and slowly. The music is very slow. It reverberates up and down with shimmering sounds accompanying the beginning of each long, drawn-out note. I always thought the GameCube was Nintendo's darkest console. It was the first to really have a lot of M-rated games, even two of which were published by Nintendo themselves. It even had Metroid Prime, a game with such a dark and foreboding atmosphere. I mean, instead of launching with a traditional bright and colorful Mario game, it launches with this spin-off game about exploring a dark haunted mansion. Everything about the GameCube felt eerier to me, and that makes this menu screen all the more fitting. It is the most simple and straightforward menu you can come by. You start looking at one side of the cube, and each of the four different directions is another side you can choose, each one representing a different option. To the right, we have clock options. This was brand new at the time. A video game console being able to track the time and date? Wow! To the left, we've got options, screen position and sound, that's about it. Down below, we've got memory card options. While the graphics for the save files themselves don't hold a candle to the PS2s, I've got to hand it to the GameCube for having a more interesting background and an overall more generally pleasing look to the whole thing. And of course, lastly, we've got the game up on top. I always thought it was really fitting to put that on the top because that's where you put the game in the console. I've always thought that was really cool. But you know, part of me always wondered as a kid, I've wondered this all my life, honestly. I still wonder this even. What's on the other side of the cube? The side opposite to which we start. In viewing each option, we only see five of the cube's six sides. There's one side we never get to see. What secrets could this side hold? A hidden option, maybe? A secret menu? I know there's nothing really back there, but it's fun to pretend, you know? You never see back there, so you have no way of knowing for sure. The cube is a mystery. It fills you with this charming sense of dread, everything from the way it moves to that colorful, oily reflection. It's like you stare into this thing and you're desperately trying to see the colors you know Nintendo so well for, but you can't quite make them out. Not at least until you actually dive in and play a game. The Cube is hands down my favorite ambient menu. It was the first one I ever saw, and to this day, it remains my favorite. Interesting fact, uh, actually, the GameCube's ambient music is really the sound of uh, Miyamoto taking a shit slowed down a billion times. Do I really need to bring this up? Uh, the Famicom disc medley system thing? I feel like it's one of those doki doki panic facts where it's like this really widespread well-known thing that everybody knows but people still recite it as like a fun fact anyway i just gotta let you guys know that i know because if i don't let you know that i know every comment's gonna be uh did you know gaming that the menu slow down but jokes aside part of me wants to believe that there's mysteries to this cube that are yet to be solved i find the gamecube definitely had the most mysteries to me like that book in mario sunshine the one behind the door in the bottle of noki bay what was that for i never could figure that out as a kid or that hidden room in luigi's mansion that nobody knew how to enter or maybe this mysterious new second quest in ocarina of time that remixed mixes these dungeons you know so well into something vastly less familiar. I can link all of the themes of this menu screen to so many different GameCube games, like the mysteries of Luigi's Mansion, the ambience of Metroid Prime, the eeriness of Eternal Darkness, the cubiness of... Cubivore? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I just don't think anything will ever top this. At least not to me, anyway. I just really, really love this menu screen. It's my favorite one that was ever created, and it likely always will be. Will we someday solve the mysteries of this cube? I don't know.